Hi everybody, Rob Mize with you once again, following up on our last tutorial, creating a virtual 3D set in After Effects. Today we'll composite actors into that three-dimensional environment. Of course, producers have been keen talent over backgrounds for decades, but we'll combine that key with After Effects 3D capabilities to add a sense of interaction between our actors and the virtual 3D set we built for them in After Effects. Now let me insert a quick apology here. I can't include the footage of these actors that you see in this scene. Uh, although I can use this for demonstration purposes, it is not my footage and I can't distribute it. However, for the rest of this tutorial, we'll use this footage that I will include with the project files. So let's get started. If you're new to animating layers in 3D space, Remember, our characters here are not true 3D objects. Rather, they are two-dimensional objects moving in 3D space. If we switch to our custom view, we can see that they are, in fact, flat, just as you would expect a video layer to be. So keep that in mind as you plan your talent shoot and your camera animation. I've opened our Virtual Elevator Actors composition and made a few changes since our last tutorial. The signage on the exterior wall is different, and I've added some signage on the interior wall of the elevator. Also, in our original composition, I used a shape with the shatter effect to give some depth or thickness to this exterior wall. As I added elements and camera animation, I was not satisfied with the results I got. So, in this revised exterior wall, let's open up the pre-comp, and you'll see that I've used this metal texture layer, the same one that I used for the elevator door, and I've made a couple of duplicates of that for a total of three layers, and I've scaled, rotated, and positioned these layers so that they create the sides of the elevator door that give the exterior wall some sense of thickness. Now back in our main composition, notice I have the Collapse Transformation button clicked for the exterior wall layer. Without this, the sides of the door disappear. They don't behave as you would expect them to in 3D space. But the wall now casts a shadow, which I want. So what do we do to get both? Well, let's click the Collapse Transformation button to restore the sides of the elevator door, then duplicate that layer and name it Shadow. Bring it beneath the original exterior wall and turn off Collapse Transformation for the Shadow layer. And you see the shadows restored. Hit AA for Material Options and change Cast Shadows to Only. So that's all that layer provides, is only the shadow, not the exterior wall. Now the shadow's in the same position as the exterior wall, so there's some interference with that wall. So let's hit P on our shadow layer and move the shadow farther back in Z space behind the wall. Oh, I'm going to put it at about 28 pixels. That way, I still get a little of that shadow dropping on the elevator door. Let's add this green screen footage of our actors, or in this case, characters, and double click the layer to open it in a layer window. Now, this is my friend and colleague, Kent Faddis and myself. And under the heading of Do As I Say, Not As I Do, plan your green screen shoot carefully, keeping in mind how your actors will interact and move within the set, as well as any intended camera movement. As you'll see later, this planning will be well worth your effort and will make for a much more convincing effect when you composite and animate your actors in XYZ space. But in this case, aside from problems with the composition, the lighting, and the actors, we'll see if we can't make this footage work for purposes of demonstration only. 
I'll determine one particular frame to use as a reference frame to adjust the scale and position of our actors relative to the background. And I'm going to use this frame where Rob and Kent just make contact and shake hands. Add a position keyframe here, and I'll also add a layer marker and label this as the reference keyframe. Using the pen tool, quickly draw a garbage mask around our two actors. Just eliminate this area that won't key out and put the mask in the add mode. At this point, let's add our key effect. Now there are many great tutorials on the subject of keying, so I'll just mention I'm using After Effects Key Light -like here. I think it does a great job, and I also like the color correction feature down here. Hit the backslash key to return to the composition window. Turn off our green screen footage and use the C key to cycle through your camera controls and set up the camera shot that you want to use with this reference frame of your actors. I'm going to say a shot about like this. I'll add keyframes for camera position and point of interest. Turn the green screen footage back on, make it a 3D layer, and boom, there's an eyeful. So scale this layer down to about 30% and position the layer where you want it in XYZ space. Here in the custom view, you can see the layer go behind the exterior wall and even the interior wall as you move it back and forth in Z space. But back in our active view, let's put this layer where it should be between the exterior and interior walls. I have it at 45 pixels back in Z space. I like to check the positioning with the custom camera view. Use the escape key as a great shortcut to toggle between your last two camera views. So that's where I want those guys and let's add a position keyframe there. Now even though these fellows are in the same shot, I want to treat them individually, at least until we reach this reference point. So duplicate the layer and I'm going to name this Rob and Kent. I'll trim the Rob layer right here one frame earlier than our reference point and delete the mask we got when we copied it from the Kent layer because we're going to make a new mask. Double click to open Rob in the layer window and in this view let's choose mask and using the pen tool carefully draw a mask through the hands and around the rest of the figure. Put the mask in the add mode. Add a keyframe to the mask path. And as we move backward in the timeline, adjust the mask path as necessary to keep Rob in the picture. You can double click the mask path to reposition it as a whole, or just grab and adjust individual or groups of vertices. I'm not going to worry about this area over here, trying to mask that out. I'll just crop that out when I position my camera later on. Now let's do the same with Kent. Double click the Kent layer and change to mask view. But in this case, we'll keep the mask we originally added. Add a keyframe to the mask path. Come back one single frame in the timeline and now adjust this mask so that it only contains Kent. And again, animate the mask backward on the timeline to surround Kent. This should require a little adjustment as Kent doesn't move around too much. The result is that up to the reference point, each layer reveals only one actor, and I can animate them individually. I just need to make sure Rob is in position so that when his layer ends, the mask on the Kent layer changes to reveal both Rob and Kent. Once they shake hands, they're on the same layer. 
Finally, in order to save time, let me show you these keyframes that animate Rob from behind the camera in Z-Space, get him to the control panel, and hold him in position until the door opens and he moves again in Z-Space inside the elevator and behind the exterior wall. I'm limited in my shot composition because of this lousy framing when we taped. Also, my stepping into the elevator gets tricky as I move in Z-space from outside the elevator to inside, I have to clear the door frame, just as I would have to in the actual world. So these position keyframes get me inside without violating the surfaces of the set. And your actor's positions should correlate with the positioning and animation of your camera. So, for this project, it was really finding the best compromise between the shot composition that I wanted and the footage that I taped. This is where it's quite useful to use different camera views and see the motion path and adjust it by using the vertices that represent the keyframes on your timeline. You can reposition the motion path vertices themselves or use the Convert Vertex tool and adjust them like Bezier curves to refine your motion path. Hit AA and add Cast Shadows for our two actors. Click Accepts Shadows and Lights. And now both our actors are in the elevator. We can close the door in front of them and let them head up, up and away, up to the stratosphere bar and grill just in time for happy hour. Remember the time, effort, and creativity that you invest in pre-production will pay off big time in production and in post-production. Experiment with other elements and camera movements to add that sense of three-dimensional depth and interaction between your actors and their virtual set. I guess we'll wrap it up there. I'd like to hear from you about these tutorials or whatever else you're working on. Till next time, this is Rob Mize. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy compositing.